Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. We are in for a treat for these next two days because we've got a little travel vlog going on. We're going to Dayton, Ohio. So not the like coolest, most like, ah, oh, yes, I want to travel there kind of location. But you may or may not know that Kevin was born and raised in the Dayton, Ohio area. And I have never really been to Dayton. And so we're going to go there. Kevin's going to show me some of the places that he grew up going to, his old house, his old schools, that kind of thing. And then we've got a couple more just like sightseeing things that we're going to do in that location. So come along with us. I'm going to get ready while I talk to you a little bit more. First off, this Merit Beauty Stick. It's their like all over. It's kind of in between like a, con uh, a concealer and a foundation. Holy Grail product. I would have a panic attack if they discontinued it. I love it so much. I don't really ever wear like a full face of like conceal or like foundation that frequently. I kind of just do this, blend it out, and that's kind of my base makeup. So I just kind of blend that out with just like a little, little fluffy brush. There it goes. Blended. Oh, I need to be packing these things because it's got to go with this. This is my little travel makeup case. I got it off of Amazon. I can link it in the description below. It's just got one little compartment and it's got it's like a good little deep size. Got a place for like my brushes and stuff. I generally like will keep my like little bit of makeup in here and then also I'll put like some claw clips or whatever things that I'm going to generally be using like in my hair in here also. So I've got like this little, this is a trick that I saw probably on Pinterest when I was in high school. You get a little like carabiner clip and then you hook your hair ties around it and it keeps them all contained. So I've got that. I've got a little case of bobby pins. You can kind of see that I keep in there. This is actually, um, I use a Quip toothbrush and the re or the refills of the toothbrush heads used to come in these little containers and now I've repurposed it and it is my travel bobby pin. Next up, I use this Say blush. It's like a good peachy color. I use it in the color rosy. I'm not in love with this, I'm not gonna lie. It's a good product. I probably would repurchase it, but I feel like it doesn't stay on my face super well. Even though it's like a cream product and those seem to work a little bit better than like the powder products. And it is a clean beauty brand, which I like, but I'm just not 100% sure if it's like the blush to end all blushes for me. So I'm not gonna lie, I don't blend it in as well as I feel like I normally would blend in blush because I know that it's kinda gonna like fade away over time. And then the rest is pretty much just eye makeup that I do. So I do a little bit of this L'Oreal Infallible Eyeliner. This is another product that I literally have been using. Honestly, this one since middle school. This is probably the eyeliner that I like started using when I first started wearing eyeliner in seventh grade. 
it just, I feel like it stays on really well. It's a good, I mean, it's called Invaluable because it's got, it's like a 16 hour guaranteed wear kind of thing. And honestly, I kind of agree with it, so. So as you can see, I only really put that on the tops of, like on my waterline on the top of my eyes. And it's just kind of to really accentuate when I put mascara on. It just gives a little bit of darkness just on the top lids. Next, I take my handy dandy eyelash curler and if this freaks you out, look away. And then after that, I use my Honest brand mascara Another holy grail product for me. This is a clean beauty brand and honestly I used to use a different mascara and It really would irritate my eyes. They would be itchy I would have to use my allergy eye drops a lot more things like that and this does not irritate my eyes at all so on the one side you have this is the extreme lash mascara and lash primer so you have one side that has the lash primer on it, and so that goes on first. And then the second half is the actual mascara. So after like two or three, three or four coats of that, you kind of have this final product. Next, I go in with this e.l.f. product, what is it called? The No Bud Shadow Stick in Champagne Crystal. It's just this like eyeshadow stick. You can kind of see at the end here. And I just like to put this in the arch of my brow and in the corner of my eye just as a little bit of a highlight. And then I just kind of blend that out with my finger. And my last step is the Glossier. There it goes. Glossier Boy Brow in brown, I think. I think they only have one brown color. Yep, brown. And that's mostly just to fluff my brows up a little bit. After that, I will use this Scandinavia setting spray. This is another product that I don't know if I'd ever necessarily use another setting spray unless I found one that was from a really clean beauty brand. But this brand, was a brand that um, a makeup artist that I follow on Instagram recommended to me when I was looking for bridal makeup um, almost three years ago now when we were getting ready for our wedding and I was looking for makeup brands that wouldn't melt off my face in the Georgia heat. And this was something that she was like, use this before and after every single step and literally nothing will come off your face. And she was right, my makeup lasted all day and I did not have to worry about touching up throughout the entire day outside of like maybe my lipstick, maybe a little bit more mascara in between our ceremony and our reception, but this stuff, magic. And the last of my very favorite products right now is the Dior Lip Glow Oil. This gloss is literally unmatched. Nothing else that I've tried has just given color but stayed not super sticky but also like adhered to my lips. I don't know if any other product is this good. There's a reason why the price point is what it is because it is literally that good. This is the color Rosewood, 
but I have also tried their like raspberry color when the fall comes I want to get like one of their brown glosses I just love them so much they feel so good I feel like they make my lips just look a little bit fuller without actually having anything that's like plumping in them I don't know but this is the finished look this is my everyday makeup look now I need to pick out an outfit and also an outfit to wear for tomorrow because I haven't really done any packing yet. I was really, really tired last night and just didn't have the motivation to do it. So now we need to figure that out. It's really rainy and gross today. So I was kind of just thinking maybe this like white ribbed tank from Garage and then just this like oversized army green button up that I thrifted a couple years ago. Just as like casual, cute, could be warm, but also I could take it off and just have a tank top if it gets warm where we're going. So I added some of my favorite gold jewelry and then it has been so rainy and so gross today that I'm just gonna put my hair up in this little claw clip. And that's the finished look. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to wear tomorrow. So Kevin just went inside to get Starbucks because we got here and the line was like all the way out to the street. But... We are on the way. I'm driving because he is technically working this morning. So he is going to be working as we drive to our first location. And he doesn't really know this, but my thought behind deciding to go to Dayton this weekend was because last weekend we celebrated Mother's Day with my family. This weekend, I kind of wanted to be able to celebrate his mom and his family um you may or may not know hit we lost his mom uh during covid and i know that's been super super hard for him and so i wanted this mother's day weekend to be a time where we can remember her remember this part of his life with her but also just kind of let the day be a distraction and not festering on the fact that she's gone but being able to remember her celebrate that part of his life but still be able to have a fun time so mm -hmm. oh, that's yours. Okay. believe it or not the thing i waited on the longest was the venti water Where? got the goods thank you my order is a ham and Swiss croissant, which are the best snacks, good breakfast snacks. Protein, cheese, croissant, what more could you ask for? And a Grande Paradise drink, as always. Hello, do you want me to tell them what I got? <laughs> you can. I got a shaken espresso because they were out of matcha which I don't even really like their matcha anyway because it's mostly sugar. But um, I now get this because I used to get this Starbucks double shot on ice, but apparently that doesn't exist anymore and this is basically the same drink. So I get that instead. Now we'll go.
we've done it. It is literally so disgusting out today. It was really, really rainy on our drive down here. And now it's just like hot and muggy and sticky. I feel like my face is like sweaty. My hair got all greasy. So I had to like slick it back because it just felt gross. But it was fine for what we were doing. The markets were not the way that I've been to flea markets before. So I was expecting like vintage goods, homemade goods, that kind of thing. And Kevin was explaining to me that these are like designed to be bargain markets, not necessarily your like typical flea market. It's like a bunch of garage sales. Yeah. It really <laughs> was like lots of people selling knives lots of stores selling copious amounts of phone cases and then just like tons of people selling the junkiest junk you've ever seen it was like everybody was hosting a garage sale that they've been holding for the past 10 years yeah. like and so the only thing that i bought was i got this little stone from it's a crystal it's not a stone but from one of the shops you can kind of see it is a lapis lazuli stone. It is specifically for healing of your throat chakra is one of the purposes. And that's one of the stones that I feel like I've been needing for some of my energy work practice. So I got that for $4, but that's literally the only thing that we ended up buying. Um, that and lunch. So... It wasn't what I was expecting it to be, but it was fun nonetheless. It was fun to go and just look and people watch a little bit and kill some time. But now we are heading, where are we heading, Kevin? We're going to Springboro, where I grew up. Springboro. Through, I mean, I guess I moved in like fifth grade, so I lived there a good chunk of my life. We're gonna go see my house, my old school. We're going to an ice cream place that Kevin go said he used to walk place. to. Yep. So. I'm excited to see all of the sights and you'll come with us. Yeah, so our backyard used to be like open. Like that fence wasn't there and there was like a gazebo there, but you could actually see out to the highway. Um, that tree was there, but there was like a gazebo, um, just all, all open grass, but it's a lot more closed off now. And the backyard has a ton of trees, that's different. When I was growing up, there were just like no trees. This is the donut store that we used to go to when I was a kid, so I want to see if they're actually still good. Maybe I'll just have a bite of yours too. Oh, they're really good actually. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was honestly better than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Donut House. Yeah, Donut House, Springboro, Ohio. It's good stuff. You want to try the cinnamon roll? Yeah. I always get a cinnamon roll. Cinnamon roll donuts are like my very favorite thing, so. Yeah. yeah my sisters too. always loved the chocolate iced ones, so I got one too. But they're not, I'm not a huge chocolate guy, but I figured it's obligatory because they insist that they're the best, so. That's good too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys a little room tour so this is the bedroom that door right there is where you come in so you enter straight into the bedroom and there's a nice little tv area right there and then you walk this way and it's straight into the kitchen with a full fridge over here is the little eating area kevin's hanging out and then if you go in this way, you've got the bathroom with a super nice shower. 
really pretty marble floors. Just a really functional little space. Next up is the whole reason we're here. We're going to Spaghetti Warehouse. And if you have never been to Spaghetti Warehouse, you're missing out. When I was in middle school, when I was first diagnosed with diabetes, every time my mom and I would go to Akron Children's for an endocrinologist appointment, we would go there afterwards. One of our, like, early on in our relationship, one of our first dates-ish, was we went to Spaghetti Warehouse and then we went to see Disney on Ice in Columbus. And now during COVID, the Spaghetti Warehouse in Columbus closed. So there's one in Dayton and we're going. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what happened between 2018 and now. I guess that has been five years. I've grown a lot. My taste buds have matured a lot. Spaghetti Warehouse was not good. <laughs> I don't know what the deal was. I used to love they have the sourdough bread i don't know if we just got like a not very good batch the like, bread was fine it was fine it just had like not the consistency that i remembered and then the spaghetti yeah that was wasn't trash good. i don't know it just felt like low quality noodles the sauce was not flavorful the right way that i remember i don't know what happened but i'd rather eat fazoli's any day yeah yeah, it was it was not good, especially the spaghetti. The bread was fine, but yeah, I don't know what happened. So now we're gonna go walk around this what looks like this like hip area of Dayton. We'll see if it is or not. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> upon the coolest little spot if you ever come to Dayton make sure you go to the Oregon district it is seriously so cool it's this cute little like brick street they have lots of cute like little bars and breweries and restaurants but most importantly they have a ton of really cool like vintage shops little knickknack shops it's honestly what I was hoping the flea market was going to be when we went, but it was just the happiest stumble upon. So let me show you what I got. First, we ended up at this little store called Clash, and they I got the coolest little glass jar that opens like this. I honestly have no idea what I'm gonna do with it, but I have been looking I've been looking for really cool like colored glass decor and I saw this in their window and that's honestly what got me to go in the store. I thought it was so cool. I got this really cool like oversized green jean jacket that I thought was just like super super beautiful. It's like really oversized. It's like a really good fit. I think it'll be great for like when it's chilly in the summer, chilly summer nights, or into, I think, the fall, it'll just look so cool. I cannot wait to wear it. I have really been obsessing over finding cool jackets lately, so this was a top find for me. I found this cute little dress. You can kind of, let me back up. This cute little dress. It's this really cool blue and green pattern, and it's got these really beautiful, gold buttons up and down it 
And I honestly was thinking more of wearing it like a little short sleeve jacket. I saw this TikTok of this girl and she was doing a like what I thrifted versus how I styled it kind of thing. And I'm probably gonna do that soon. But I thought in that video, she was wearing this jean dress that was pretty much this exact same style with just a cute little tank top and a skirt underneath it with it open like a jacket and I just think that's the cutest like little vintagey style for spring so we got that and then we happened upon the most beautiful well-kept Goodwill that I literally have ever seen in my life I got this LL Bean brand sweater it's just this men's large sweater it's like such a comfy knit I thought it would be perfect to like wear as a sweatshirt or wear worn like draped over my shoulders for just like a nice spring summer look. And then this is honestly the golden find for me. Kevin found this, it was high up on a shelf out of my eyesight and he just like walked dead straight towards it and I was like what are you doing and then he pulls this out. It's got these beautiful little embroidery paintings on them of these just cutesy little flowers. I thought that it would look so cute as a vase on top of my record cabinet. So it's just this really pretty pink uh, glass. And like I said, I've been looking for colored glass decor and I think it was literally, yeah, $5.99. You can't beat that. And then the last thing that we found was in another one of those like vintagey knickknack stores. And it's this Wrigley's Double Mint Chewing Gum. It's a little case. I haven't decided if I want to put things inside of here or if I just want to like use it as decor, but I thought it was like the perfect little retro pop of color thing that is exactly the kind of decor that I am looking for right now. So that's what we got. A lot of really fun treasures in a place that we were not expecting at all, but it makes me feel a little bit better about the way that our flea market experience went earlier. Yes, but so if you're ever in Dayton, make sure to check out the Oregon area. We might go back toward that area for brunch tomorrow. We'll have to see what reservations are available and if we can get in anywhere because we're kind of just planning to pop in and it's mother's day so that might not go as well as i want it to but that's okay um so the rest of the night we're going to eat the donuts that we got earlier which have been calling my name since we tried them and then honestly, I need to edit this vlog a little bit because if it's gonna go up on Monday and today is Saturday, we gotta get working on it. So we're just going to relax, have a chill rest of the evening, and then get up and going again early tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, everyone. We are waiting for a table at a brunch place that I found that has chai french toast and i'm very excited about that and then after that we're going to, to just the air force museum mm -hmm. the air force museum that's in dayton kevin says it's ginormous that they have tons and tons of original planes you said they had the original plane that dropped the second bomb in world war ii so we're gonna see lots of things there we'll take you with us So we're gonna start in pre-flight and then we're gonna finish in the modern era. So be ready. The thing that got me last time is that the coolest and like densest part is definitely at the end. And so if you spend too much time on the first like two hangers, then we, you're just like toast. We gotta pace ourselves yeah. accurately. Yeah, so we'll be good. Kevin knows way too much about this stuff. And I mean he's... I grew up going here with my dad. We, okay, I've I guess probably that's been fair. here like 30 plus times, so. Okay, that's fair. He's still gonna be my tour guide. 
we're gonna start like the early days with the Wright brothers, then we're gonna go to World War II, then we'll go and do the Southeast Asia and Korean War, but then we get into like the Cold War, but then we get into like the modern era over here, and there's like even a missile gallery, it's really cool. a very famous raid. This is actually my good friend's great-grandfather who led this raid, uh, Jimmy Doolittle. And so after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, they were all basically told and they believed that the United States couldn't ever actually hit mainland Japan. Um, but Jimmy Doolittle kind of wanted to prove them wrong and they, they took the bombers off of an aircraft carrier and they flew them across the country or across the ocean and bombed Tokyo. And it wasn't like a super successful bombing raid, but it just like scared the Japanese because they didn't even know that was possible. They didn't have enough fuel to return back to the aircraft carrier or the United States. So they had to ditch their planes in China and a lot of them got captured and like tortured and stuff like that. But a super brave raid that was like super historical. I'm happy to report that I was told we were going to be seeing planes and I asked also if we were going to be seeing trains and automobiles and with the sight of this guy here we have now seen planes, trains and automobiles. Thank you. pilot not a passenger seat princess today <laughs> didn't get the adrenaline hit of riding rides or a break or a snacks or anything fun that comes with Disney World so but it was cool Gavin knows a lot about that stuff did you enjoy it yes, that was fun. Yeah. that's what's important <laughs> so uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just end the vlog here because all we're doing now is we're gonna go get some pizza at a local Dayton pizza place called Marion's mm -hmm. and we might go to another donut shop that I've heard of and then we're just gonna drive home and relax the rest of the day so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this little mini travel vlog or any other vlogs like that you can give it a thumbs up if you want to be notified when I post other videos make sure to subscribe and turn the little post notifications bell on so that you are the first to be notified when I make a new video thank you so much for watching see you next time